Welcome back to Nerdy Knickknacks and Geeky Gear. My name is Sebastian, and I like to take a look at all the gadgets and gizmos aplenty that nerds use in their everyday life. Today, we're taking a look at the Joy-Con pad for the Nintendo Switch. But is it a good third-party controller, and should you buy it? Let's take a look. So there are plenty of ways to use a Nintendo Switch with a GameCube style controller. There's the uh, original GameCube controller and the uh, USB GameCube adapter. There are USB controllers that plug directly into the dock uh, and have a GameCube layout. There are even wireless options out there. But what if you want to use your Nintendo Switch in handheld mode and use GameCube style controls. Enter the Joy-Con pads. Now I purchased these uh, GameCube replacement Joy-Cons from a seller named Convoca off of Amazon. And so I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below where you can go and check those out. Part of the reason I bought these is because a, a while back I saw a video on YouTube of a modder who took a GameCube controller and basically turned it into Joy-Cons. And since then, I have been seething with jealousy and trying to find a way that I could also enjoy GameCube controls while I've got my Nintendo Switch in portable mode. So today we're going to be taking a look at the pros and cons of these Joy-Con pads, or as we're going to be calling them, uh, the Joys and the Cons. Joy and Con. First, uh, in the Joy column are the ergonomics. First and foremost, the button layout is the same layout as the GameCube controller, and if you're anything like me, you know that the GameCube controller is probably the greatest controller ever created for a gaming console. And on top of that, these controllers are much thicker than the original Joy-Cons that come with the Switch. And if you're like me and you've got big hands, big sausagey finger hands, then you know that trying to do gaming marathons while in portable mode, your hands cramp pretty easily. There's nothing really to grab onto, but because these are rounded here on the back, they give you a better grip and a more natural holding, um, holding placement uh, for someone with bigger hands like me. Con. Because these are bigger, they don't work with official Nintendo accessories like this one right here. Uh, they're just too big to slide into place, so you're really kind of stuck using them uh, independently, one in each hand, or on the Switch like this. And I play my Switch like this, I would say 99% of the time. Yeah, 80% of the time. But the point is there's no way to, to have a regular style controller grip with them unless you buy another accessory for that specific purpose. Joy, these controllers have nearly all the functionality of the original Joy-Con controllers minus the IR on the bottom of the right Joy-Con, but I don't really have any games that use those anyway, so that's not a big deal for me. It might be a big deal for you. I don't know, that's something you're gonna have to decide, but ultimately it, that was not a make it or break it for me. So that's why that goes in the joy category. Con, it only came with one charging cable in the bag. Now these don't charge while connect to the Nintendo Switch. They have these little uh, USB type B ports that you charge them with. And for some reason inside the box, it only came with one charging cable, even though both of them have to be charged independently. I don't know what what they were thinking with that, but um, I'm sure you've got other USB type B cables lying around. I know that I just went to my big box of USB cables and pulled one out and plugged it in and it was fine, but it was still kind of annoying because you kind of expect there to be uh, one for each so that you can use it right out of the box. Joy, they work. And at the end of the day, that is really the important question. Do these work and how well do they work? Well, in my testing, I didn't have any issues with input lag or dropped wireless connection. They seem to work just as well as the original Joy-Cons that came with it, if not better, because I don't have that annoying Joy-Con drift that you get with the Nintendo Switch after you've played with them for long enough. Con, the instruction manual. Let me just read you a small excerpt real quick. When the controller is closed, Press the any up, down, left, and right keys of left controller or any A, B, X, and Y key of right controller to open the controller. 
and the LED indicator will circulation flashing. These instructions read like they were written by my cell phone's autocomplete. Uh, I'm assuming when they say closed and open, they mean on and off, but I can't be for sure. Um, when you do read them, you can kind of muddle your way through them. At best, the instruction manual is unreliable and at worst, it's completely illegible, which isn't that big of a deal because once you slide the Joy-Cons in, provided they are charged, they will sync with the system and you're ready to go and start playing. If you're looking for a way to use a GameCube layout controller while your Nintendo Switch is in handheld mode and don't have the hacking or modding skills necessary to make your own GameCube Joy-Cons, then these off-brand Joy-Con pads are a great, inexpensive way to add another set of controllers to your Nintendo Switch arsenal. Well, I hope that video helped. If it did, leave me a like. If it didn't, leave me a dislike. Also in the comments below, let me know what third-party controllers you're using, or if you hated my face, let me know. I hate my face right now. I don't know why I shaved my beard. It doesn't go with any of my branding. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I know I'm saying uh, a lot of that twice. I, I just, I can't. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, good Lord. I need a haircut. <sighs>